I bought the most expensive shrimp in the world, so now let's try it. And so now I'm gonna be trying the shrimp ceviche for the first time in my life. Cheers! Now is a good time to explain everything confusing in this clip. Such as why am I eating the world's most expensive shrimp in a warehouse out of all places? Or where did I get it in the first place? So a couple of months ago I made a video about shrimp farming and the main focus was an Indianapolis based shrimp farm called Ataraya. And about a month ago they reached out to me saying Hey Seb, we like the video, would you like to come visit? And my reaction was so I made a small trip to the USA which set me back some 5 grand which makes this shrimp that I'm holding the most expensive edible shrimp in the world. And you can find this shrimp even in Michelin star restaurants such as Atomics in New York. What's funny is that I'm not even monetized yet so spending 5 grand on a shrimp made me go broke and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Anyways, let's take a look at what makes this shrimp worth 2 Michelin stars aka 5 Farm tour. Also, the machines here at the farm are noisy, so sorry for that. Our company, Ataraya, comes from uh, Oaxaca in the southern part of Mexico. Okay. And uh, the name means um, cast net, like one of those nets you see that's cast down and it comes down. But it also refers to the uh, interconnectivity of all of our tanks. The man you met over there, uh, Michel, the inventor, he also invented uh, something called a jellyfish, which is like a sensor bundle which takes all the readings at one time in the tank and then reports them back to a computer. And so we imagine all the tanks being on that and connected to that system and constantly feeding data and being interconnected. And, and so Ataraya is okay. the, the fitting name for that. And then okay. Agua Blanca is the name we sell our shrimp under. Yeah. But uh, right now we have 13 of our shrimp boxes. Uh, each one has a tank on bottom and a tank on top. I'll show you a tank that doesn't have any uh, shrimp in it right now. Uh, we have lines to move water and air through the tank, so it's like a big jacuzzi constantly providing aeration uh, and circulation. We'll put a, uh, a long net, or uh, we call it sustrato, yeah. along the center just to... Like the raceway. Create, yeah, yeah, to create a raceway effect, effect yeah. straight down, and then the circulation of it comes back. Um, we have the coiled tubes along the side, that we're gonna pump hot water through and uh, they, they will allow us to keep the, the temperature up in the tank. And that, that's how we can uh, regulate it. In the, uh, the control room, there are uh, pumps that turn off and on depending on the tank temperature. So once it gets a certain temperature, they'll stop pumping that hot water through the tank. Okay. So that's how we control temperature. Uh, we control solids in the tank uh, by, there's a uh, little clef or a canal that uh, the, the dead collect in and then we pump them out. Um, but the way our bioflock system works, and you'll see the, uh, the other tanks have the brown water in it, um, there's a colony of microbes in the water that help process the shrimp waste and break it down into uh, nitrites to nitrates and so making it completely harmless because the more they build up it doesn't impact the, the water quality. Yeah. And so, so that's basically like the aquaponics farm I was and so yeah, they, yeah. they basically use the same stuff, yeah. but then they run the water to the plants instead of running back to the shrimp. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, our, our closed system is uh, we just keep the, uh, the colony of microbes in the water happy and then they yeah. keep regenerating the water. And we do that, the, uh, the only additives we ever put in the tank, uh, like we never add any weird chemicals uh, uh, or antibiotics, we, we only ever put in um, uh, like aquarium probiotics or sugar just to get the uh, the, the bioflock system going and, yeah, yeah. or in Mexico they, they add molasses just as a carbon okay. source so that okay. the, the bacteria can can break down the, uh, the nitrate yeah, yeah. and um, we can take you up and, and show you uh, from up there or uh -huh. yeah. or there's it's easier uh, if you don't want to climb a ladder there's a, I, I sort of want to go on the container okay yeah no of course yeah we can, we can show you whatever you want to see uh, but uh, I'll turn on the water so you can, I'll turn on the ventry first, which will be the ones that blow the water.
But this is this way when it really gets up to speed, it will create the raceway effect. Okay. And, and especially with the Sustrat. Uh, Sustra. Does it create it also without the thing in the middle, or? Uh, well, we, we consider ourselves like a, a training facility and the, kind of a lab, so that's one of the things we're testing, is like which uh, tanks have performance with the, the those different variables. Yeah. This is uh, Nathan, our yeah. sales manager. Nathan, Sebastian. Nathan. It's Pleasure good. Yeah. You. Thanks for making the trip out here. Well, I mean, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll turn on the uh, the blower system so you can see the aeration effect. We were at the farmer's market this yeah. morning, so we were selling the shrimp that we produced here. So you already sell it? I yeah. thought, okay, that's cool. Yeah. We, we harvested just yesterday. Yep. Uh, so we uh, we had one tour yesterday. We have a tour the last yep. Friday of every month. Uh, yeah, I saw that, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, so we had a few people yesterday morning for that event. Yeah. And then, yeah, we we sell some of the inventory that we produce at the local market, so that's where we were this morning. Okay, yeah. that's good, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't mean to interrupt your tour. I just wanted to make sure. It's I good, yeah. 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 <laughs> but no, uh, so we use uh, Marion County drinking water from, you know, just out of the tap, but we okay. fill the tanks and uh, the air lines liberate the, the, the chlorine from the water yeah. because otherwise it would uh, kill the bioflock yeah. system. So so is it all fresh water or is it also salt water? Uh, it it's, starts fresh and then we add salt. Our big salt bag is up there and uh, we'll uh, add a couple hundred pounds of salt to the tank. Okay. And uh, but yeah, each, each tank has um, 16,000 liters in it uh, of water. Yeah. Um, and they're the same size on top and bottom about um, our control rooms. Here. And so when you add the salt water, is it then salty like the sea, for example, or is it more or less? Uh, it, we, we do it to uh, 20, milli, uh, 20 parts per million. Okay. Okay. So it's a little less salty than the sea. Um, but each tank has its own dedicated pump, so uh, there's never any mixture of any water. So if there's ever any biosecurity problems in oh, one, oh, it never yeah. mixes That's to yeah. to any other one. So it's a self-contained uh, thing. Uh, one thing we're testing out is uh, the different pumps. So that's why they're different. But those are ones that move water through uh, through the tank, and then that one moves air through both the tanks. And then those center ones are for moving waste, like I showed you, that they accumulate. Yeah. We can pump it out through there, collect it, and, and get rid of it. And, and that'll be hooked into our clarifier system. Okay. Right now we use um, two different methods of clarifying. Uh, they're not hooked into this tank. I'll show you one that's working. We'll work on one there. Um, so, right, I'll show you this. Yes. So we have like different clarifier designs. This is one that uh, Michelle put in and, and he's testing out. And then another one that we're testing out to see which is the most effective at, at and removing so, solids. So, was the, uh, so that's for removal of the solids? Yes, because okay. what we want to do is, um, I'll show you the shrimp in a second, but we want to uh, control the, the solids in the water, but we can't let them get yep. too low. Uh, if they get too high, the shrimp have trouble breathing and, and we have problems with that yeah. the the too many too who can just have trouble processing the the bioflock system but the bioflock itself is basically this okay. and so this is what we're uh, we, we try to test out the water every day and uh, and, and make sure it doesn't get too high or low mm -hmm. and um, this is what the the clarifiers are removing the softer stuff is uh, will be removed by the skimmers Okay. And uh, kind of the heavier stuff is removed by the, uh, the, the clarifiers. We're just trying out different models and seeing what's most effective. The mud that we, uh, that we collect from the tanks goes into the biodigester where okay. it gets broken down. And uh, the waste products out of that is uh, a very nutritiously fer uh, fertilizer uh, liquid and methane. Yep. So uh, I can show you over here we have our biodigester, which contains where we put our shrimp waste, and there's the line. But this is gas that's just produced 
in house and like yes. from, from from our shrimp yeah. waste. What percentage of revenue? We, we is haven't the potential of this. Uh, well, we we haven't uh, tried to to monetize that part okay, yet, okay. but but I know that there are. There are lots of people interested in, in, in that part of it, yeah, and, and, would, and yeah, specifically would, so who are interested just in our waste and, and, okay. and just, just want that. Yeah. Uh, we, we have, do we, have we done any studies on uh, how economic our waste is? Like, and, yeah, uh, so we've been testing it. So our hope is that really all the biomass that comes out of the system is reusable yep. and or resellable for the production partners. Yep. So I think Thomas showed you the biodigester, um, obviously the, the shrimp is the main focus of the production, but in addition yeah. to that, a lot of the other biomass that comes out, we're doing testing right now for fertilizer application. Yep. So really, like that's where the regenerative aspect comes in, in addition to not just sustainable, but even regenerative. Yep. Is reutilizing, you know, most of most all, if not all, of the materials that were that are crucial to the production of the shrimp. Mm -hmm. So part of that's like the zero water discharge process. That's reusing the water from harvest cycle and production cycle to production cycle. But additionally, yeah, um, imagine like when these are next to or even on farmland, we want to figure out other applications for some of the other biomass that's coming out being fertilizer. Yep. So there's a bit of a process to, to desalinate some of that, which is like the process oh, that we're yeah. doing now. Yeah. But then after that, you know, we look at the, the NPK, or nitrogen, yeah. phosphorus, potassium. Uh, combination, so um, I think that's still kind of in R and D, but that's part of our okay. yeah, research. Yeah. So when this comes out, there is you you have to like adjust it somehow. You can just sprinkle it on the field and uh, at the moment, no, because it's solvent. Yeah. And so that's what we're figuring out is how to how like, to make it usable. Make it usable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Economically. <laughs> but yeah, but, 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 this, but this is what we're using to test how uh, productive it is of methane. When uh, when it's on, the methane will kind of bubble out there, and we're, yeah. we're kind of seeing how uh, rich our waste is of producing that. Uh, oh yeah, I don't know, that's yeah. off. I don't know if Thomas showed you the, the biogas. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We need so to, do do you cook stuff on it, or is it yeah. just for? Yeah, we have coffee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have our coffee pot there. Oh, nice. Do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we, we want to uh, make it even more of a closed system, eventually have a, our boiler fed back into it, oh. so, uh, so it's, it's even more green. But uh, yeah, right now the boiler is supplying the heating for uh, our tanks. Uh, I'll show you some actual shrimp. Um, uh, if you wait over here, I'll, I'll grab a net. Well, uh, well we, I don't have any of the uh, the little baby shrimp to show you right now, like that the come in our nursery. Yeah. Uh, but what we do is we stock our, our nursery tanks of 50,000 at a time. Okay. And then we distribute them out after a month to, uh, to five or six or seven or eight other tanks. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the things we're testing out is density. So this tank right here is one that we distributed out about two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. And so are these shrimp or are these prawns? They are also called Pacific white leg prawns. This is a tank we've been harvesting for a couple days, so yeah. the density is not super great. But at the moment, but they get to this size. So this guy is about 40 grams. All right. 40 grams? Yeah. So yeah, that's, very, that's, very, that's yeah. more than jumbo, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we would sell him under the... Uh, the 16 to 20 oh, label, which means that there would be 16 to 20 of him in a bag uh, weighing yeah. one pound. Yeah, then we have other smaller guys. I'll show you the the anatomy. The, yeah, I'm holding him like this because if I held him like this, he would stab me yeah. with this thing. It's kind of, it's his Telson. Okay. And he's broken skin on me plenty or the, the shrimp have. Yeah. But yeah, they'll stab you with that. They also have this rostrum in, in yeah. the front. The, the shrimp are kind of built like little sea rhinoceroses. Yeah. But. Like, actually, when I was researching your farm, it's the, it's the first time I looked at images of shrimp and... They no, they're, they are alien. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, 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 <laughs> they are very weird, yeah. If, if alien life exists, it looks far more like him than like me. Yeah. All right. I'll show you the feed. 
And this is Drew, he was busy getting all our water samples this morning. I'm Sebastian. But as far as feed goes, we get ours from a supplier in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Yeah, and we, we try out, uh, as they get older, they, uh, they eat different size feed. Yep. Like, like this is what they eat when they're more adult, and this is what they'll eat when they're a baby. It's kind of more like a coffee ground. Yeah. And so what do you feed them? It's uh, fish protein, yep. fish meal, basically. Um, and that, we add calcium carbonate, so a lime, just to, uh, in case the pH in the tank gets too low, we add that as an intervention. And the only other thing is sugar. So yeah, we just had yeah. table sugar to, uh, if the bioflock system needs yeah. a kick. But other than that, we don't put anything into the tank that's harmful. Uh, I'm gonna take you up here, and you can get our. our did you uh, want a view of uh, going upper part of the tank? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's see. This one's so new, we haven't taken the plastic off yet. Hey, Thomas. Yeah. Could you hold oh, my yeah. camera? <laughs> Wait. I understand, Thank leave you. But yeah, we have Thank you. this, and this is connected. Uh, if, if, um, if you, you actually, if you cut through there, you get a better view. Yeah, so each tank has, uh, or each box has two tanks, one up above, one below, completely yep. separate water supplies. Uh, so we're able to make twice, make twice the use out of the same footprint. Yeah. How do you make the second floor of the tank? Uh, well, these are uh, customized tanks from, uh, that we, we built that way. I mean, like it takes oh, yeah. a lot of work, but yeah, they, we built them and Put a lot of steel and so in now you get them. Now you build them here, or now you get them from China? Uh, from a factory in uh, Mexico City is where. Oh, most okay, of okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's my part of the tour. I can uh, I can have you talk to Nathan, and then in a second uh, I can show you how we harvest the shrimp, and we can yep. make some for you. Right. Thomas also told me that the survivability rate at their farm is above 90%, which is great, and that the main factor causing shrimp death is control of the solids. And now for the taste test. Damn. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. 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 I also did interviews with Nathan, who is the sales manager of Atarea, as well as with Michelle, who is the inventor of the shrimp box, and I'll be releasing them separately. Thanks for watching.